Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to graph inequalities in two variables. I want you to read through this information on your own. So let's pause that video and then read through this. All right, now that you've had an opportunity to do that, let's do some practice problems. All right. Oops, let's slide this up. Here we go. All right, so uh, when you're graphing an inequality, you basically are going to graph it the exact same way as you would graph an equation. Um, so let's pretend like the, the equation is or the inequality is an equation. So for number one, if I was going to graph the equation y equals 4, then I know that my slope that is going to be 0. That's that horizontal line. And I know that my y-intercept would be 4. So let's start there. So there's 4. And then it's going to be that horizontal line. Now for this one, if it's an inequality, so this one is going to be a dotted or dashed line. Anytime you have the less than or the greater than symbol and you're in an inequality that you're graphing, your line will be dashed. If you have the less than or equal to or the greater than or equal to sign, then you're going to have a solid line. So this is a dashed line. All right, and now we need to do some shading. So we have to pick a test point. So I'm going to pick, I usually draw, like to pick 0, 0, if at all possible. And so as long as it's not on the line, you can pick it. But I'm going to pick 0, 0, which I've highlighted. So then I'm going to substitute that into my inequality and see if it's true. So, for example, the ordered pair for the point I've picked is 0, 0. So, in place of the x-coordinate, substitute a 0. And in place of the y-coordinate, you're going to substitute a 0. So, I've got 0 less than 4. And then I'm going to ask myself, is 0 less than 4? Meaning, is this a true statement? Yeah, 0 is less than 4. So, then that means that 0, 0 is a solution to this inequality which means that all points that are on the same side of my line as 0, 0 would be points or would be solutions rather to this inequality. So I'm going to shade this side of the line. Now if 0, 0 was not a solution to the, to the inequality, then I would have shaded this side of the line. Okay. Let's try number two. So for number two, this is another special case. It's x is greater than or equal to one. Now if the equation, if it was an equation, it was just x equals one, we would say we had an undefined slope and that we had an x-intercept of one. So let's go ahead and try that now. So I'm going to find 1, but on the x-axis this time, because remember this is that special case. And an undefined slope is that um, vertical line. It goes up and down. Now before I draw in that vertical line, should I have a solid line or should I have a dashed line? So remember what I wrote over here on the side. So I've got that, if you've got the or equal to part, you're going to have that solid line. So let's come over here. I'm going to make a solid vertical line, put my arrows. Now right now I've graphed an equation. The only difference between graphing an equation and an inequality is about the shading. So just like I told you before, pick a point that is not on your line. And I like to pick 0, 0 if I can. And I can. So I'm going to pick 0, 0. So I'm going to substitute 0 in place of my x and y coordinates in the equation. For this particular equation, there's not a y coordinate, just the x coordinate. So 0 greater than or equal to 1. So then I'm going to ask myself, I'm going to ask myself, is 0 greater than or equal to 1? No, it's not. So this is not true. So that means 0, 0 is not a solution. So I'm not going to shade that side of the, the um, 
plane. I'm going to shade, in this case, this side, which is the right side. So every point on that side would be a solution to my inequality, x is greater than or equal to 1. Let's try another problem. All right, now we have number 3, which is similar, um, more similar to what you're going to be faced with. You have both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Okay, so if I were to rewrite this, let's pretend that that was an equals again. So pretend it says 3x equals y, which would be the same as y equals 3x. If I asked you to graph y equals 3x, you would tell me that the slope is 3, and you'd tell me the y-intercept is 0. So let's go ahead, find the y-intercept of 0. And if my slope is 3, remember that's the same as 3 over 1. So I'm going to go up 3, right 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. And then I'm going to go in reverse. Now, um, this one I do need the ruler with. So now I'm going to draw in that line. Now remember, this one it has got that or equal to part. So I'm going to have a solid line. And if you stop right here, if you don't do anything else, then all you've done is graph an equation. We're graphing an inequality. So now we'd have to figure out which side we need to shade. So for this, I need to pick a point not on the line. I can't use 0, 0 because it is on the line. So I'm going to pick another one, 1, 1. So my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate are the same. So go to the original inequality, which is right here, and we're going to substitute the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate for that point into the inequality. Well, my x and y-coordinates are both 1, so 3 times 1, is it less than or equal to 1? 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 1? It's neither, so 1, 1 is not a solution to my inequality, so that means I'm not shading on that side. That means I'm going to shade on the opposite side, which is right here. So all points over here that I've shaded, that would be in that purple section, would be solutions to my inequality, 3x less than or equal to y. Okay, so now it's your turn. So I want you to do problems 4 through 9. So pause the video and complete those problems now. Okay, now that you've finished 4 through 9, you should be looking at my answers. Uh, you may need to zoom in, making the necessary corrections. Uh, also jot down if you have questions that you're not sure about, if you're not sure about any of these problems, uh, so that you can address them with me. Okay, let's go to the next page. So on the next page, we're still talking about graphing inequalities in two variables, but on this page, it's dealing more with word problems. Okay, so what I want you to do, again, you're going to pause the video and read over this example. Go ahead and do that now. All right, let's go through these exercises. Okay, so number one, it says tickets for the school play cost $5 per student and $7 per adult. The school wants to earn at least $5,400 on each performance. Part A, write an inequality that represents this situation. So we have $5 per student, so I could do 5 times however many students, so I'm going to do S for students, plus it's going to cost $7 per adult, so 7 times the number of adults, and that's going to give us the total cost. Now, the school wants to earn at least $5,400. So, if I say at least, can they earn that amount of money? Yes, so I know I've got the or equal to part. Is it okay if they earn more than that amount? Yes, so this is that greater than or equal to. Okay, part B is telling us to graph the solution set. So in other words, graph this. So they've already drawn for us over here a grid. And so let's graph it. They've put the student tickets on the x-axis and the adult tickets on the y-axis. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5x plus 7y is greater than or equal 
to 5,400. Now, when I do this, I could just graph this using my X and Y intercepts. Um, that might be easier for here, so let's do that. I'm going to come, I'm just going to draw a line and come over here on the side, and I'm going to take turns substituting a 0 in for X and a 0 in for Y. So 5 times 0 equals 7Y, which is greater than 5,400. So if I divide 5,400 by 7, I get about 771.4. This is an estimation. Okay, and actually let me change those to equals. I'm just going to treat them like equals right now. So I'm going to find around 771 on the y-axis. Okay, so I see the 600, there's 600 and there's 900. So halfway between 6 and 9 would be 750, so that line would be 750. So we're a little bit above that. So I'm going to say right about there. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, do my X intercept. All right, let me see if I can slide this over just a smidge. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and then let's do the X intercept. So that's going to be 5x plus 7 times 0 equals 5400. So 5x equals 5400. So now I'm going to do 5400 divided by 5. And I get 1080. So the X intercept would be 1080. Uh, so I see, and it's using the same scale here, so 600, 900. So right here would be 1,200. Uh, halfway between 900 and 1,200 would be 1,050. So we're just slightly to the right of that amount. Maybe right about here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph this. And based on my inequality that I have written, I've got that greater than or equal to, so I know it's a solid line that I'm going to make. So let me get my ruler. Okay, and now I need to choose, figure out how I'm going to shade. Uh, so again, as I've said before, just let's pick. I'm going to pick right here, 0, 0. That's the easiest point to pick and see if it makes the inequality true. So 5 times 0 plus 7 times 0 is that greater than or equal to 5,400. And I'm going to move my picture. Okay, so that would be 0 plus 0 is, so we already know, 0 is not greater. So that's not a solution. So my solution set would be over here on this side. Okay, any points over there. All right, and then part C, if 500 adult tickets are sold, what's the minimum number of student tickets that must be sold? So for this part, uh, I'm going to substitute the 500 in place of adults, which in this case was Y. So I'm going to do 5X plus 7 times 500 is greater than or equal to 5400 and solve. So that would be 3,500. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to subtract 3,500 on both sides. So I'm going to do 5,400 minus 3,500. And I'm going to get 1,900. And then I'm going to divide that by 5. So that's 380. So x must be greater than or equal to 380. So what is the question? What is the minimum number? So the smallest number. Well, any value greater than or equal to 380 would work here. So the smallest or minimum value that's going to work is 380. Okay. All right. So now your turn. So I want you to go through and go ahead and do problems 2 and 3 right now. 
Pause the video and complete those. Okay, welcome back. You've had an opportunity to try problems two and three. Uh, you need to pause the video and get this information down. And I'm thinking now, I'm thinking that you probably have a question about part B in number two because it asks about restrictions on the domain and range. Well, the domain is all the possible X values. The range would be all the possible Y values. So when we're talking about the domain and range, we can use where our x-intercepts end up uh, as, as assistance for us, right? So when we look at this, if I solve, I've, I found the x-intercept, oops, I found the x-intercept and I found the y-intercept. It is possible to have zero uh, four-cylinder engines and only uh, 276 v6 engines that is a possibility it's also possible so it's possible to have none of one type of engine and all of the other and vice versa so that's why i've substituted that took time turn substituting zero in place of x and zero in place of y so that i could get the x and y intercepts and those x and y intercepts represent the limits for this particular problem on the domain and the range so for example uh, X can be any value less than or equal to 571.4. Well, you're not going to make part of an engine. So X can be up to 571. And same thing for Y. Y is any value less than or equal to 1,111.1. So Y can be any value up to that amount. And then number three, please know that this is an L. Remember that to find the perimeter of a rectangle, you do two times the length plus two times the width. So if the perimeter is less than 800 feet, that means twice the width plus twice the length is less than 800. Okay, if you have questions about any of these problems, please, please contact me. Uh, once you've submitted this assignment and made your necessary corrections, you'll be ready to complete your independent practice. Good luck.